All right, we're going to start learning about evolutionary trees. Yay. All right, um, this is an evolutionary tree. This is called a rooted phylogenetic tree. By the way, this is chapter 20. If you... Uh, following along. Um, a rooted phylogenetic tree starts, it's, it looks like an actual tree. It's got the root is the bottom here. This is the common uh, relative of all the com uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Common ancestor. Common ancestor, thank you, of, of all the organisms. So, you know what we call that organism? That this is a common ancestor of everything? Yes, the, the, the UCA, or it's often called the LUCA, the last universal common ancestor. Now, there could have been some other organisms living on the earth that maybe went extinct. But this is the, this is the last one that relates to everything. Can you name any certain uh, trait that this last universal common ancestor would have? It would be something that's shared by every organism. Uh, not a nucleus. The bacteria don't have nucleus. So none of these guys or these guys have a nucleus. DNA? DNA. They all got DNA. So DNA is a, is a characteristic. What else do they all have? Ribosomes. They all have ribosomes. Very good. Glycolysis. They all perform glycolysis to make energy. Every living thing does. There could have been another thing that made energy some other way, but the, we know that the last universal common ancestor did that. Do they all have cell walls? Or like cell membranes? Or like um, membranes? So it, it probably had a cell wall, actually, but definitely had a cell membrane. Everything has that. It probably had a cell wall, and the cell wall was lost in a few individuals. Um, but because all of the uh, all of the um, bacteria have cell walls, and all the archaeans have cell walls, and most of the eukaryotes have cell walls. It, it probably it may have had a cell wall. You like this stuff? Mm -hmm. Now, every time you see a the branch split, that's a speciation event, and we get many splits. And you got to understand that. This isn't all-inclusive. Like, there's the animal's branch. The animal's branch is a whole big tree all on its own. There's 17 different phylums of animals, or 19 or something like that. And so and every one of these lines has its own branches. There's a whole bunch of different types of green filamentous bacteria. There's a whole bunch of different types of halophiles out there. Um, obviously, there's a whole bunch of different types of plants. So each one of these branches has its own mini branches. And they're trying to make a, an entire tree of life. It's called the Tree of Life Project. Have you ever heard of this? Where they're trying to get every organism and put it in one giant tree. And it's on the internet, available to you. Would you like to see it? Heck yeah. Oh, wait, I think I Tree of Life. Aren't you cool, Dylan? You can find it. Oh, Here we go. The Tree of Life web project. Oh, this look, cool. look at this evolutionary tree we've got. Isn't that beautiful? And you can just click on it. We started from a little crack. Now, there's an archaea tree, there's an eocyte tree. Look at 
all these different types of animals. These are just simpler forms. Um, where are we? We're uh, in the amniota. Reptiles, mammals, birds, dinosaurs, etc. Amniotic eggs. And if you click on that, it goes to the next part of the tree. Of all these, are we with turtles, tortoises? Are we with crocodiles and birds? No. We're up here with mammals and their relatives. Let's click on that. Here's the mammal tree. Which one of these? All of these are extinct. You know, most living things are extinct. Or most things that have lived on the planet are extinct now. But, so a lot of these are extinct. But let's go to the therapsids. They kept evolving. And um, let's go to the mammal group. Here's part of the mammal tree. Which one are we? Are we monotremes? Are we marsupials? No, we're placental. Click on the placental tree. Here's the placental tree. And where are we? Are we anteaters? Are we bats? Are we pigs? Some of us are. Um, Oh, here's the primates. Click on the primates. Yeah. Now, which group of primates are we? We're numeral monkeys? No, we're the Katarina, which include humans, great apes, gibbons, and old world monkeys. Did you have that? Here's the Katarina tree. We're on the hominidae. And that breaks up into the orangutans and the chimps. And there's homo humans. There they are. Yeah. Uh, we're modern humans, homo sapiens. Yay, there's us. Woo. We found us on the tree. Are you excited about the tree of life? It's fun. You can search that thing yourself. And so you can take any branch and just keep clicking and it goes off to further branches. Now this is another way of looking at an evolutionary tree. In this case, this is called an unrooted tree, but um, uh, the, it starts in the middle and works its way outward. And these are the archaeans, and these are the bacteria, and these are the eukarya. Notice that archaeans are closely, more closely related to eukaryotes. These are kind of on the same branch, and the bacteria are on a different branch. There's stuff about our ribosomes in our cells that are similar to their ribosomes, but different from bacterial ribosomes. So uh, we're actually closer to the archaeans than the archaeans are to the bacteria, which is kind of interesting. You can look at it on this. See how the Archean branch is very similar to the eukaryotes, or is on the same branch as the eukaryotes, different from the bacteria branch. And you'd think Archaeans are, Archaeans and bacteria would be real closely related because they're both prokaryotes and single cell. But um, uh, there's fundamental differences in the, uh, the cell chemistry. So you'll see um, uh, this branch point is a speciation event where one species becomes two. And often they don't know. They have to kind of make guesses on these types of things. You see uh, this uh, where it says uh, polytomy or polytomy. I'm not sure how that's pronounced. Anyway, you see it looks like one organism here becoming uh, evolving into four. That might be something like a... Uh, um, an event like on the Galapagos where you get one species of finch, you know, evolve into many. But if they're all coming from the same point here, what that usually means is that the scientists aren't really sure what evolved, you know, what branched off first and what branched off second and that sort of thing. So they kind of put them all together. Often the scientists don't, don't know the exact relationships. But we call two two branches that come off of the same line, we call those sister taxa. And for instance, 
humans and chimpanzees um, are sister taxa. They evolved from, um, uh, they share a common ancestor um, that goes back, oh, in humans and chimps, it goes back about seven million years, we think. And it doesn't mean that humans evolved from chimps. It doesn't mean that chimps evolved from humans. It means that chimps and humans share some common ancestor that very well could have been different from chimps or humans. Probably had some traits of both. Um, so uh, you can't say that, chimp, that humans evolved from chimps because back, if you go as you go backwards down this, down the uh, tree, you're going backwards in time. So seven million years ago, chimps may have been different than they are now. Now, this is a, uh, a ladder-like evolutionary tree. We call it a, a, a cladogram. And what a cladogram shows is, um, is how the evolution works. And it doesn't go by time, necessarily. It goes by the evolution of what we call shared derived characters. So a character, the character are these traits here, like vertebral column. Um, a vertebral column evolved, and uh, lancelets, they don't have it, but everything else, if you follow the green thing, um, has it. Actually, yes. Okay, so this this is kind of written weirdly. It looks like they're saying hen's jaw. The hen's jaw is this branch. So the lampreys have a vertebral column, but do not have a hen's jaw. Um, fish fish don't have legs. Let's go up here to something. Did you know fish don't have legs? No, I didn't. So legs, no, the fish don't have it. Yes, all this stuff up here has legs. So everything, frogs, lizards, and rabbits all have legs. Huh. What about hair? When did that evolve? It evolved in the mammals. Rabbits have hair, lizards do not. We call this a cladogram. Um, there's different ways to write it. And we're going to go over cladograms uh, tomorrow and more in the next few days. Cladograms are big, and we'll learn how to write those, and we'll learn how to use them. Now, this shows the taxonomic classification system. It was introduced by a scientist named uh, Linnaeus, Carolus Linnaeus. And he came up with the binomial system of nomenclature. In binomial nomenclature, he used two names. And it's always in Latin, because Latin is like a root language. But every species gets two names. The, the first name is called the genus, and the second name is called the specific epithet. And so we're genus Homo, and that genus is large-brained primates um, that walk upright. So there's other Homo species that have gone extinct. Do you know any other Homo species besides Homo sapiens? Uh, no, that's actually not Homo. That's that's genus Australopithecus. And Neanderthal. Uh, Homo Neanderthal. So you could got Homo Neanderthal. Y'all don't remember any others? Um, we did this in regular bio. What was the short? I thought I heard it. Homo erectus. Remember that? Homo habilis. Y'all remember that? There's a whole bunch of different Homo species. These and those and those all went extinct. And we're the only ones that survive. But that is only, that's the genus and specific epithet. 
So the homo genus, you can go into what's a larger category. Y'all remember King Philip came over from Germany slowly? Or they can change it to did King Philip come over from Germany slowly? Um, domain, kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, specific epithet. The two of these together is called the species. But Homo sapiens, what family are we in? Do you know the family that we're in? We're family hominidae. And we're in that with apes. Apes are also considered to be hominidae. Um, uh, and then what order are we? Do you all know the order? We're primates. That means we, uh, we um, have the rotating shoulders and the opposable thumbs. Those are big. And there's monkeys have that too, as well as apes. And then what class are we? Do you know what class? Mammalia. Mammals. Mammalia. It means we have hair. And what phylum are we in? Chordata. Chordata. That means we have a nerve cord running down our back. You know what kingdom we're in? Animalia. Animalia. And so in what domain? Eukarya. Eukarya. So if you want to classify us, the eukaryotes all have their own branch. And then the animals have their own branch. And then the chordates have their own branch. And then the mammals have their part of that branch. And so it just keeps branching out more and more, you see, until it finally gets to us. Linnaeus invented this whole idea. It's a great classification system. And you can see how as you, y'all don't pack, pack up yet, it's very distracting. You can see as you go through, um, as you go backwards through this, mammals, chordates, animals, eukarya, it gets more and more, there's more and more organisms that can fit into each category. As you go this way, there's fewer and fewer organisms that are in the category. Until you reach the end, that's just one organism. So, That's about that. That's about all for that. Make sure you read the, the chapter. And um, you never know. I'm going to roll the quizzes. Yeah, you seem to be. You can get another one.